In today's tutorial, let's do the poncho for you and me. This is a girl's and doll size poncho. Let's begin. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on the poncho for you and me. And this is a doll size version poncho that has the kid size matching poncho all within one pattern. So I'm going to be talking about this pattern because there are four different sizes available. Two years old, four years old, six years old, and then a separate set of instructions is for the doll. In both of these particular examples, the child size and the doll size are similar in the way that they're made. The only difference is, is that the calculation of dimensions are different. So today I'm going to talk about, um, as we begin, what you're looking at in the pattern. And I'm going to be demonstrating the doll size version of this because it is the smaller size. Because all the concepts are the same, the only difference is that you have to read on the pattern of what those uh, differences are. So for example, on the ribbing here front, the child size is, says that it's 10 but when it comes to the doll size it says that it's 6. So it's just a slight different differential between the measurements and the chains in order to start but once you get it started it's really quite easy to be able to follow. So before we dive into the pattern more you're going to need a six and a half size K crochet hook today and you're also going to need a Bernat Super Value yarn. This is a pretty inexpensive um, poncho to make and you'll find that it goes pretty good and the Bernat Super Value certainly goes a long way. So you can see the ball counts that you have here and in the doll size it's only one ball that you'll need and then if it's uh, the two years you'll need two balls, four years of age two balls and then if it's a six years of age you'll need three balls. So it's pretty inexpensive to make one of these particular projects. So this makes it a really great project to work with. You'll notice that they're wearing buttons. There's a total of four buttons and you can improvise on those buttons as well. Let me blow up this photograph and I'm going to show you but let me talk a little bit more about what you're looking at for the instructions. So let's talk about the instructions and you'll notice that there, if you've printed it in color, you'll notice that two years of age is represented by this color and then four and then six. So what's going to happen is that there's a total of three different sizes. So you'll see that there's a number and then parentheses of actually what's inside. So 18, 19 and 21 and you'll see that these numbers match each other when you're going to work with them. So for example let's just say that we're doing the front here. It says chain one work 45, 49, 53. So you have to choose the one that is matching the size. So what I like to do for myself is that I like to take a highlighter and just highlight instructions that make sense for me. So if I was going to do the two years of age I would highlight the 45 and then I would just go down and every time you see that there's more items in parentheses I would highlight the number that you want in order to do it because it's so easy to kind of go off the track and sometimes get it wrong. So that's the way that they're doing. So if there's no parentheses like here it says chain 10 and you don't see any parentheses all here that means that it's the same for all of them and then you'll see in the instruction says measure until it gets to 18, 19 or 21 inches and 18, 19 or 21 is a set of instructions to telling you how long you're supposed to go and it's based on the size of dimension that you're going to go. So that's just the, the variation and you're going to need to refer to this. But let me take you to the second page because that's where the doll pattern starts. So the doll is completely different from each other and you'll see that you have the doll's poncho it starts off and so the doll's poncho is all completely different set of instructions. So you will not see any parentheses in here because the doll sizes don't change. They're all uh, pretty much standard uh, for that particular doll style. So I have highlighted as I promised you things that were critical to me in order for me to teach you to learn. And don't be um, scared to highlight any of your patterns in order to work. So let's talk a little bit about the order in which this is made. So here's a blown up version of the child and the doll size. The only difference is dimensional. There's no difference between the dolls in order of stitch work and the order in which things are done are completely identical as well. So we're going to have a front panel and she's got a back panel and the front panel and the back panel look identical to each other. There is a slight variation about seven and a half inches up from the neck here or up from the bottom here. There's a difference to handling the neck. That's completely normal in clothing and then the back panel is looks exactly identical including the, the ribbing down here at the bottom and we work our way up. Once we get the back and the front panel done we then move to a collar and we make our collar and the collar is done separately and then sewn to the project afterward. Same thing is happening on the child size. Then once you have the front and the back panel 
sewn together and you can sew together the collar on top as well. You're going to do the side ribbing separately and then sew them onto the project after you're done. So basically when you're looking at this the ribbing here belongs to the front panel. The ribbing belongs to the back panel as well because it's identical and then the side ribbing is done afterward that you can see even on the child's version just like so. So this is a kind of an easy way to go and I want to take you through um, the ins and outs of now building this and we're going to go step by step. So to begin today's pattern I'm going to start off with the starting instructions. We're going to do ribbing and then this is going to take you to the front panel. And the front panel ends at seven and a half inches before we start doing the neck. And this is important why I'm telling you and you do the neck and you come and we're going to cover that in today's tutorial. Now the back is very similar. We start off with the ribbing again and we continue along right here but the only difference is, is that this pattern that we're working on now has to continue to nine inches not seven and a half. So the back works up higher in the back and then we move down and do the shoulders here and so there's not very much going on in the shoulders when it comes to the back here. So in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to do the ribbing first and then I'm going to show you how to go back and forth and then I'm going to tell you to do the front panel and I'm then going to tell you to do the back panel and both of the panels I'm going to pick up. So the front I'll pick up at seven and a half inches when we get there and the back panel I'll pick up when it's nine inches in the back and I'm going to carry you through this project and then we'll start the rest of it from that point. So here is the front panel at the seven and a half mark. It's seven and a half inches from here all the way to here and then we start the shoulders. But my goal here is to teach you how to do the ribbing here and then take you up. So on the back panel it's going to be from here all the way up here should be nine inches. So the front stops at seven and a half and the back stops at nine inches. So once I get you beyond and show you how to do the ribbing here and then take you to the first few steps to here you're gonna go all the way and then I'm gonna take you from seven and a half inches then for the for the front and show you how to finish it and then in the back I'm gonna take you from the nine inches and show you how to finish. You can see this is looking pretty good. It looks the same on both sides and I think it's actually gonna be fabulous fabulous when it's done. So as I promised the side ribbing is not done until afterward so you're not going to see any side ribbing at this time. So let's uh, begin to show you the ribbing and grab your six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook today and your Bernat Super Value yarn just like you see. So let's begin and we're going to start off with the slip knot and for the doll size version we're going to chain six. Okay so let's just do that. So one, two, three, four, five and six. So now second chain from the hook one and two go to the second chain turn it around and get the back loop only and I want you just to slip stitch. So just yarning over and pulling it through and through. That's it. So going back down the next one just pull through and through and you're gonna slip stitch yourself all the way through your chain. So if you started off with chain six and you went second chain from the hook that means that there will only be five slip stitches going all the way across. So it makes this ribbing quite easy to make. It's quick, quite quick using this size of hook and size of yarn. So continuing to go all the way down I'm just making sure I'm nice and slow and loose to get myself started and then I'm gonna speed up to my regular speed. So we're down, down uh, to the end. Now technically what you do is you turn around and you start the next row. I don't recommend that for this kind of idea especially when you got slip stitching involved. So what you ha what you need to do is turn it so it's directly for you. So I'm directly, I'm right here. I'm looking at it from this point of view so it's not turned any which way. It's turned straight looking at me. Take the hook and dive right into the first back loop only. So you're only gonna go in back loops. If you're new to crochet there's two strands of, okay. So the first strand closest to you is the front loop. The one away from you is the back loop and together they make what is called a stitch. So let's go into the back loop only. So dive right in, yarn over, pull through and through. And keep moving down that. So just going in and it's just easier if you go in from this side point looking view instead of turning it around completely. And just continue to go down the back loops of just slip stitching. So for the ribbing your goal is to get this ribbing a total of eight inches long. It really doesn't take long. Okay so there's only five there so you've gotten to the end. So turn it now okay so you're looking straight at it and again diving in just to the back loop you're gonna slip stitch yourself all the way down. 
You're gonna need a tape measure so you'll need to measure that eight inches and you need to stop when you get to eight inches. The size of hook matters on this one so if you're gonna substitute your hook and you're gonna make the hook smaller or bigger it will change the number of slip stitching rows which then may alternate, uh, alter your pattern. So just continuing to work down. Okay, so I'll just turn it again and straight down. So please do that back and forth until it measures a total of eight inches long and then I'll pick you back up and then we'll start. So you're gonna do this for both the front and the back panel and you do not fasten off once you're done. So you can't just do both of these ribbing by themselves. You have to do them together with the front or the back panel. So once you get to the end of this, you're either gonna pick up and do the front panel or the back at that point without fastening off. So please do that for the remainder until you get your eight inches and I'll meet you back here in just a moment. Okay, just a few moments ago I left you here and it was about 10 minutes in real time for me in order to do this. So I actually have the other one done as far as like the front panel so I can literally just look over top and see that they match each other as well. Not only can I do the measurement. So the first one you probably want to measure the second one. You could probably lay it over top. It's all good. So now we're going to start the front or the back panel. It doesn't matter because the stitch work is identical going all the way up. For the front panel we're gonna stop at seven and a half inches from this point all the way forward and then the back we're gonna stop at nine inches. So, but let me show you how to get started and this is where I've left off and now we're gonna work across the back here. So we're just gonna just continue along. We're not gonna fasten off but just stay tuned and I'll show you how to do that next. So let's begin to work up the panel. So this is where I am and I've been doing all my slip stitching whatever. Now I want to just to turn and I want to work along the edge of the side that I'm already currently on. So I'm going to chain one and into the very same one in the side there I want to put in a single crochet. So my goal is is that I need 21 single crochets all the way down to the end. So that's considered one of 21. So you want to just kind of squeeze them in but here's a tip. You can probably go in between what appears to be ribbing. So if that's one just right in there. The next one is two and three. I'll do this live on camera. That was uh, one, two and three and four. It's coming in next and five. 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10, 11 and 12, 13 and 14. Oops this was gonna be 14. Now it is 14 and 15, 16, 17, 18. Uh, see I'm just gonna try to squeeze it in there. So this is 19 and see I got a little bit extra left so I'm just gonna come over here and 20 and then the very final one will be 21. So you can squeeze it in a little bit if you have to at the very end in order to make it work. So that was 21 going all the way across just like this. So let me explain something because if you remember in this certain directions I actually highlighted something and I wanna point that out to you. So we're here back on the instructions and I'm about to do the first row which we just did 21 single crochets and this is for the front and the back and it says second row here and third row. But I want to point out to you is that when we were just doing this last one this is the right side so this makes it the wrong side, right side. Do you get that? So this is right side, this is wrong side. So what I want to tell you here is that we're gonna continue to do repeating of rows two and three over and over and over till we get seven and a half inches for the front side. The back will be nine but it ends on the wrong side row. That's why I highlighted that. Do you see that? So this is row number two. So once you're finished off row number two and it looks like this, chain one, one single crochet in the next single crochet and etc. This is the wrong side. So before you car carry on in the front side of shaping the neck you have to end on the wrong side just like the back. So even though we go to nine inches tall we're gonna end on the wrong side which is row number two. This is so important in order to keep your pattern in balance. So now as we begin to go to the top 
every other row is identical to each other. So we just go one, two, one, two, all the way up there. In this case it's two and three, two and three, two and three. So you're gonna notice it has a bit of texture in here because what we have is single crochet double, single double, single double and in the next row where it's single it turns into a double and where it's uh, double it turns into a single. So it goes opposite to each other to give this beautiful look just like you see of the texture that you see that the girls are wearing in the model shots. So let's begin and I'll show you how to do that. So let's begin row number two. So we're just gonna go along where you just did the single crochet. So you're gonna go back and forth. So this is the straggler happens to be on this side of it. I'm gonna bury that as I go. So row number two we're gonna chain up one first and leave this straggler down on top and you can bury that underneath and in the first stitch you're gonna single crochet. So in the next stitch if we go single double, single double all the way to the end the next one will be a double crochet. So that means the next one is a single. Do you get that? Next one is a double. So you just gotta remember what you're doing here in order to do it. So this is single and double. So please do single, double, single, double all the way to the end. The last one if you've got your stitch count properly will end in a single, in, in a single crochet. You'll always remember that the very first thing one if it's a single that you started here it'll end in a single on the other side. So in the next row it starts off with the chaining three which counts as a double therefore the other side will end in a double and if you can remember that it'll help you keep balanced. So again just single, double all the way to the end. So I'm coming up close to the end I'm keeping those numbers consistent in order to stay in balance. And so what I need to do is that I need to concentrate on everything and making sure that the final ends in a single crochet. And I'm only keeping that in balance to the pattern. So let's turn our work and go for row number three. So row number three is uh, opposite to what is sitting here. So I just finished with the single crochet. Therefore I have to chain three which counts as a double crochet and then the very next stitch is a single because there's a double right directly below it. And this is what creates that texture. So the next one do you see how that there's only one strand that goes across and the next one here? So this is a single and a double. Look at it. You can see it. So if you're ever confused you can just say okay yeah that's a double. No problem I can, uh, that's a double crochet there because it's a single strand. This one here there's a lot more going to it. That must be a single crochet. Okay but it is single, double, single, double all the way down. Okay do you see that? So this one's got a lot more to it so that therefore that's a double. This one's not so much to it so that's a single. So we put in a double over top of a signal, a, a, a single and the next one is just one single over top of a double. And you keep doing that all the way down and this will be conclude row number three. So please do that and I'll see you at the end of this row. So jumping ahead to the very last section here. So the last section of this one because it's row number three will be a double crochet in the final stitch and it just happens to work out anyway. So I'm not having to think about that. It just it is what it is. So turning around we're going back to row number two again. So row number two is the wrong side. So remember after seven and a half inches you wanna be finishing off on row number two and even nine inches in the back panel you wanna finish off on row number two. So we start off at chain one one single into the top. Now here see the last one was a double crochet so it's a single right over top and then we keep moving down. So again do you see how it's just very simple underneath? So that's a single and this is a double. So if you see a single it means it's gotta be a double and if you see a lot more going to it that's a double. It's gotta be a single and you're gonna do that all the way down. So I want you to repeat rows number uh, two and three over and over and over ending on row number two at the seven and a half inch mark and do not fasten off because we're gonna carry on and if you're doing the back panel go all the way to the nine inch mark and don't fasten off and we're gonna carry on from that particular point in order to finish off the back panel. So I'll see you at the end of that and this is uh, not so hard and you're gonna see that you're gonna fly along pretty quickly on this. So I'll see you at that point. So I'm now at the part of the tutorial where I have the front panel and the back panel almost done but I gotta finish it off and you'll notice that there's a height difference. So I had you stop at seven and a half inches for the front here and this one's at nine inches for the back. So in the back here I left on a little bit of extra yarn here and I did it for the both for the for both of them so that I could do them without having to break into another yarn ball. So on the back panel I just have to do one more row and then that's completely done and then in the front here I have to grow this up a few more but I have to create an indentation for the neck. And so what we're gonna do now in this part of the tutorial is that I'm gonna take you through the front and then I'm gonna take you through the back. So let's begin the front panel. I'm finishing it up near the shoulders and the neck area.
So as we move up into this area here, we're going to create what is like a, um, an extension to the panel. So we're gonna come up slightly like this on one side and then we're gonna do the other side. So we're gonna do them both individually um, as we go. So what I want you to do is that this is where we've ended. I want you to just to turn your work. So what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna play and we're gonna crochet ourselves to roughly about here and then we're gonna go back and forth. So it's only three rows that you have to do. Then what we're going to do then is skip a certain amount of stitches and then repeat exactly what we've done over here but on this side instead. And so we're gonna be able to grow it up. So it's almost gonna be like looking like a vest once we get this section done. So let's uh, pull up the pattern and let's get going and we're gonna continue the pattern as is. And so it says to repeat the pattern across. So where we left off, if you remember it was single crochet right at the end. So therefore we're gonna start off with a chain three and then single crochet in the next and we keep doing that for seven stitches before we turn around and go back in the other direction. So let's begin. So let's begin row number one of shaping the neck and this is just the first side that we're gonna do and we're gonna repeat the pattern across seven stitches. So we just have to make sure that we just continue along. So let's uh, begin and we're going to chain up three, one, two, three and as I just mentioned it's just because we single crocheted underneath that this row here is the next one we're starting with double crochet. Okay, so let's count our stitches and I'm doing the, the pattern as normal. So the next one is a single crochet that's for two and then we just um, double crochet for three, single for four, double crochet for five, single crochet for six and double crochet for seven. So there's our seven across but wait there's something more that needs to be done and it says half double crochet two together over the next two stitches. So the next two we're gonna do a half double crochet two together. So just wrap the hook going into the next stitch, pull through pull and then wrap the hook again and go into the very next stitch, pull through and then you're gonna pull through all five loops and that's a half double crochet two together and then it says to turn. So that's gonna create like a angle going up. So let's turn our work and go for row number two. So it says row number two chain does not count as a stitch. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna chain two and it says half double crochet over the next two. So just coming, wrapping the hook coming into the first one, pull through and wrapping the hook coming into the next one, pull through five loops that you got on the hook, pull through all five. So this is gonna create more of an angular shape again in the neck which is what you're looking for. And then it says pattern to the end of the row. So where are you for the pattern? See if you're looking at it and you remember there's not much going on here. So this is a single crochet, there's a lot going on here. This is a double. So the very next one then would be a double and the next one is a single and you keep doing that all the way to the end. So double and single and double and the final, see that's a double crochet, is going to be a single. So that was row number two. So let's turn and work and do the final row and we're gonna repeat the pattern to the last two stitches only. So if this is a single that we just ended with, so we're gonna chain up two, sorry chain up uh, three which is your double and then we're going to single into the next and you keep doing that repeat pattern until you get to the final two stitches and you're gonna do half double crochet two together as well. And then that will complete this side of the front of the, of the um, outfit or of the poncho. So this is a final two here so these are gonna be half double crochet two together. Just like that and pull through and that's it. Okay, so what you need to do at this time is that we need to fasten off. So what I would do at this point is just grab your scissors, just leave a little bit of an extra longer tail for yourself and I would probably leave it so that you could sew it directly to the neighbor in the back. So just leave enough yarn that you can possibly do that and just pull through like this. So if you remember we started on this side and we went back and forth. So when we go to start the next side we need to start right here and then go this way. So we need to be, be paying attention to that as we go. So let's move on to do this side of the front of the poncho. Okay so let's do the other side of the poncho. We're gonna just start some new yarn here and so we have to basically do everything in reverse. We started on an edge and we came to the neck 
and then we went back to the edge and then we came to the neck. So this time we're starting in the neck going out and so therefore the instructions are opposite to what you've done over here. So it's just what we have to do look at it and skip three stitches. So one, two and three and go into the fourth one over and insert in and I'm looking at the stitch and I can see that this is a single crochet. So I know that I'm just kind of keeping an eye on the pattern as is. So let's just join it with a slip uh, stitch like that and I want to chain two. It doesn't count as anything but this stitch plus the next one is gonna be half double crochet two together. So we're starting the next so we're starting for, with that first this time and then we continue the pattern all the way to the other side. So the next one here is a single, this is a double so the next one must be a double. And you notice that I'm burying this yarn as I go. Okay, so you continue along all the way to the edge. Just continuing the pattern so that it looks absolutely seamless. It's so important I, I took extra time to show you what the stitches look like so I'm hoping that, that you will get that as well and therefore it will save you time in the end as well. So let's turn our work and go for row number two. So row number two is that we're going to continue with the repeating of the pattern except for the very final two stitches will be half double crochet two together. So if we finished off with the double crochet that means that we start with a single this time. So a single and then double and I keep doing that pattern until I can physically see the last two stitches in this section. This pattern I've been wanting to do for quite some time but I've been kind of procrastinating because I was kind of scared of it so in retrospect it was kind of a silly assumption. So I have the final two stitches here. Remember the chain two doesn't count as anything and we're gonna put the final two together with a half double crochet two together there. Okay, so this is row number two. Turn and work and let's go for row number three which is the final then for the vest. And so we're gonna chain up two, counts as nothing and I've already gotten used to this pattern. So the first two are gonna be two together, half double crochet. And then we carry on in pattern. So I'm looking at it here, that's a single. This is a double so the first one must be a double in order to keep everything opposite. And you keep doing that all the way to the end and that's it. And what I would do then is leave off enough yarn to do the sewing of the two pieces together. We're gonna end it with the double crochet right at the top. So that's it. So I'm gonna fasten off leaving an extra long tail for yarn if I need it. If I don't need it, you know what, it's just an extra foot or so of yarn that you can just uh, use, uh, just toss away without any worry about it. So, so that's what it's gonna look like then at this point. So I have the top done and let me back away the camera here. And so I have the front, it looks like a vest at this point. I have the neckline and now I'm ready to move to the back panel and then we'll begin to do that next. So let's start on the back panel and I'm picking it up where I left off. And so we're just gonna turn our work and it's gonna be very similar to what we did already but there's only one line across and then we stop and then we pick it back up on the other side. So to begin this side here is that we're going to repeat the pattern only for a total of six stitches I believe. Let's just take a look. So repeat pattern across for six stitches and then we skip nine. So we're creating a kind of similar to the front but we're only doing it with one row. So let's look at it. We stopped with the single crochet so therefore it's gonna be a, a double crochet to begin and we only want six in a row. So we're just, this is gonna be two for single and double is three, single is four, double is five, and single is six. That's it. Done. Okay, so there, that's what you have here and if you look at it from the other point of view, see this matches the top just like that. Okay, so let's fasten off this yarn and let's bring it back on again and we wanna keep it at the same visual that you're having now so do not turn your work and I want you to skip nine stitches. So let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. So skip nine and go to the tenth over and there should only be six stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's uh, begin again. So just starting with the another fresh start of yarn and you're gonna repeat the pattern as you go. So I've just put my hook into a single crochet. 
So I'm just gonna attach it with the slip stitch and I'm gonna chain up three and the next one will be single. Sorry, actually I've attached it to a double crochet. So I just noticed it because I'm visually looking at for it. So I've attached it and now I'm gonna single crochet right into the first one and I want to just kind of just take a look at something else that I kind of noticed as I was coming along. See how I finished with a single crochet on this side? This one should start with a single crochet in order to keep balance. So that was another clue that I was wrong. So I started off with a single so therefore it's gonna be double and I'm not counting I'm just repeating the pattern right to the end. So single and double and then single and then finally with the double and I was burying that end in as well. And that's it. So the back panel would be completely done at this point and you're gonna fasten off your yarn and I'm leaving an extra long yarn tail for now and I can deal with that later. So that's what it looks like. It's not too big of a drastic difference of having these little notches but when you put the other one right above it you can see there is the hole for the doll head. So before you go any further what I would like you to do is that I would like you to assemble the front and the back together. Now I had you leave extra long tails on either side. You can deal with these as you go. So what I want you to do is just look at it from this point of view and just put them opposite to each other and if you notice that one side looks more different than the other then just uh, make sure that it does match. So this kind of looks like it's the same side and I'm just using it as an example of just looking at how it looks down here. So what I wanna do is that I wanna put the pieces together just like this and there are six stitches near the top and what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna finish off one side completely and I'm gonna use the darning needle for the other side just to put things together. So this is the shorter one of the two. So I'm just gonna pull this through and because if this is the child size that you're working on you're really gonna want those ends to be in nicely uh, because it is a visual thing even for the doll. And so you're gonna wanna hide in the loose ends right into the uh, basic stitches here. And if you go in and out three times you can always hide your yarn and it will never fall out on you. So just go back and forth three times underneath the stitching so you don't affect the seam line. And make sure that you don't reef on it so that it's um, too tough. And then just snip your yarn. So now that one, that strand's gone. So I'm gonna use the remaining strand on the other side to be the one that sews together. And what I would do is recommend a whip stitch for this in order to put things together. So just putting on your yarn and just simply just go right directly across the road. So this is where it's attached and I'm gonna go directly across the road and bring it together. And just come back over to this side, go to the next stitch, go to the next stitch on this side and just come across and you're gonna work your way down the seam line just matching the stitches and you should have the same count on both sides of the shoulder. So I want you to do this concept with the other side as well and sewing things together and then we're gonna move on to the collar and then to the side uh, seam or to the side ribbing. So once you get all the way to the neck there that's it you're stopping and so basically just put in your hook back and forth three times. Sorry, it's not a hook, it's a, <laughs> it's a darning needle. So just uh, do that. Took me the longest time to remember not to call a crochet hook a needle when I first started teaching on YouTube. So just back and forth like this. And so without turning the project around as far as flipping it, you want to do the other side just like this. So just pick it up and do this side of the project. Again looking for which one is shorter if you left a shorter one. So this one's shorter so I'm gonna finish this. So I'm gonna finish this out and then I'm gonna use this to sew together and then I'll be back and then we'll carry on in this tutorial. Okay so now I'm back. Both of my seams are done and you can see that this is what it will look like now. So you see that the back goes up further on the, on the inside here but what's missing on this? So we're missing the side ribbing here and we're missing the beautiful turtleneck top. So what I want to do now is that I want to make the, the ribbing for the top. The ribbing for the side is the same concept as well as the ribbing for 
the turtleneck. So let me show you this. I worked on this last night. So here is my neck section here and I don't need to show you this concept but I will tell you a little bit about it. It's the collar. It's chaining 16 and then single crochet or slip stitching back and forth. So slip stitch, slip stitch it. Now how long does it say? It doesn't say. So what you have to just do is that I took a rough guess when I was doing it and what you want to do is that you need to make it long enough so that it fits loosely around the circumference of the neck area. Okay, so I just took a rough guess of 10 inches last night when I did it and that actually takes me to the whole circumference. So I want it to be loosely. I don't want it to be to the point where I'm already stretching it in order to get it to that because then if it's already stretched you are never gonna get it over a doll's head or even a child for that matter. So you want it to be so that it's just relaxed and it matches the same distance here. So we're gonna do that. So then you can do that and you can leave it to the side. Then what you have to do is the side ribbing. So the side ribbing matches this particular length. I've already done that as well. So the side ribbing here was chaining of eight. And so you chained eight to begin and then you just roughly match it. So in this case I've got, I've just got a few more rows to do. I took a rough guess last night. You can see I'm just slightly short. I wanted to get it right to the end because if I stretch this now it's gonna cause the, the project to buckle. So I want it just to be relaxed. So I wanna do two of these and I have done two of these. I did these last night and I just took a rough guess. So this one actually, this one's perfect when I look at it from this point of view. Okay, so do you see how it matches? And so I want to then sew this edge together as well as this edge to this project. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish off and I'm going to get this just roughly to another inch long and then I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna sew the neck piece on and then it's done. So you can notice that there's buttons on the side and they're, nor they're closer to the bottom of the poncho. Those are not functional. Those are just there. They're accenting. So if you don't wanna use buttons you just wanna tack in the area down here at the bottom in order to bring it into balance. So um, I'm gonna show you how to sew on the collar next but I wanna finish this first before I go any further. Okay, so off camera I just finished this but what I want to do before I just finish off the yarn I wanna leave an extra long tail that can actually sew this all completely together to this panel without having to restart a brand new yarn line or a brand new yarn strand. So I'm just leaving an extra long tail and I'm just going to pull it through and I'm doing this not only for the, the side panel section here this side as well as I'm uh, doing the same thing with the collar. So it just allows you to um, save time if you have the yarn strand already attached to be able to work with it. So let's uh, continue. Let's show you how to attach the collar. So let's begin to attach the collar and I'm just gonna finish this yarn strand because I was just testing and I made sure I'm leaving enough that I can use it to sew directly to the, the project. So what I'm gonna do for myself is that I'm gonna put the seam at the back of this. So this here is the front, this is the back. So I'm going to start off in the back section just like this. So let me grab my darning needle and I'm just gonna show, I'm gonna do a whip stitching as well on this. Now I have not turned the sample over so this is the side I was doing the whip stitching so I want all the stitch work of attaching to be on the same side so therefore I can flip it the other way if I wish. So what I'm just gonna do is that I'm going to attach and just come into the roughly to the center of this panel here and I'm going to join on this. So what I want to do is just kind of move along each one of the stitches that are in the collar as well like in like not only it like in the collar of this sample here and just kind of roughly going in between these ridges that you see here. And I just wanna take my time and I wanna just kinda of go around and then once I get all this done around I'm gonna then sew this together in the back and therefore it'll be nice and hidden when the, when the doll's wearing it or if the child's wearing it depending on which size that you're working on. So just go around the collar and just do your whip stitching in order to attach your collar at the end. And let's, uh, I'll see you back here in just a moment. So now that I'm back all the way around the whole collar is now attached and it, this is the back of the poncho and all I'm just gonna use is the same yarn strand now. I haven't cut anything off and I'm just going to use it and I'm gonna whip stitch the back of the collar together and I'm just matching each stitch together in order to do that because the reality is, is that it's the same um, width all the way throughout the collar. 
So that's what you're gonna do. So when you get to the end of this you're gonna fasten off. Use that technique of burying the yarn in back and forth three times in order to make it work in order to have a seam line that is flawless but also that you don't have any yarn tails hanging out of your work. So see at the next part of this and we're gonna do a whip stitching up the side seams and then this project is near complete at this time. So my collar is now complete. I rolled it down just like it does on the model. You can see it's nice and loose so you can get the, the head through and now we're gonna just lay it back out and now we're gonna do the side seam. So this collar will be sticking up. So the side seams are very easy. It's the side ribbing and I'm just gonna start on one side and just match it directly to the other side. So I'm just gonna use the whip stitching um, technique in order to attach all the way down to the side and uh, it's just really quite easy and therefore this project would be then complete unless you want to attach buttons right to the side ribbing. So again just using the same strand that I showed you just going into the project and then into the side and just roughly match it with whip stitching. Also this is the same side of doing the all the other stitchings so I can turn this inside out then or, or inside right or outside right um, when I'm done with this so that if I at least I'm consistent with the stitch work that it all stays on one side just in case it does look any different for you. So just whip stitch yourself all the way down the side. Just keep an eye uh, if you're doing this. Keep an eye that this doesn't at the end get like this. So if that means that you're grabbing too much. So just keep an eye on that making sure that it's all being pretty consistent as you're going all the way down to the side. And I'll see you back here in just a moment. So off camera I worked and I put the seam together on both sides and now that's it. So the nice thing about it is that you just have to fold it up now and you can tell which is the front side and the back and if you just look at it I'm gonna flip it so that it's gonna be the opposite side. So all the stitch work happened on this side of the project. So I'm just gonna flip up the collar and just toss it the other way around like so. And now I'm looking at the good side and this is neat. So I'm really quite excited about this particular pattern. I'm looking for the front of it which is right there. See how it kind of leans up just like that. And so the decorated buttons that are on the doll including the kit size are just decorated. They're not there for any particular reason uh, for functionality and you just have to sew them and you sew them right directly through the thicknesses of each other. So just make sure you match it up um, so that it has a nice flat seam at the bottom. And then the doll has two and then the child also has two. So you just have to measure it up just to make sure that there's enough space for the child's arms to come out of the poncho if you wish. And this is a really neat concept. So this is the front and this is the back. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the crochetcrowd.com. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is the poncho for you and me and it's a free pattern available on yarnspirations.com. Have a great one. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.